Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. I am a little bit hungover. <laughs> my head is killing me. I'll do my best. One second. Uh, let me just pop on some music. Hang on. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Carbon based. There we go with some Stella drone. Hang on. Right. So, I'm going to be dropping into a bit of Kerbal Space Program this morning, only for a little bit, mind you, because I do have to turn my energies over to working on the latest bullshittery. <clears throat> So on that front, it's day five of a probable 35. I'm highballing the estimate there. Normally it takes me about 25 days, but um, recently, well, sorry, not recently, um, I've noticed that um, I can use uh, Source Filmmaker, which I'm probably going to take advantage of for the sake of uh, doing a bunch of cutaway gags. And Source Filmmaker can be rather complicated. And uh, you guys probably know me already. I tend to go a bit... Um, all in when it comes to over editing, so we'll see. Um, but regardless, I'm just kind of ooh, sorry. I'm just trying, uh, just uh, cracking on really with the editing. Uh, in four days, I've been able to do a very, a very rough cut of the bullshittery. So I've kind of, I, I think I've got it. I think I've got the scenes in mostly their final configuration. Um, they're not well timed, mind you. There's lots of cutting that needs to do, lots of trimming. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to crack on with that and also start moving them into Adobe After Effects for their uh, text and animation stuff. So yeah, right. Indeed, thick. Yes, me too. I think they're kind of cool. A source filmmaker can be a uh, yeah, can be quite interesting. So we'll see how it goes. So uh, Too Long Didn't Read is that it's day the start of day five of probably 35 for Team Fortress 2 bullshittery. And if you'd excuse me just one moment, I'm just trying to... got a really gnarly dry skin on my knuckles. Ever since the outbreak of the virus, um, with all the, the disinfectant stuff that you put on your hands, my, my knuckles have just dried out something horrendous. Thank you, Snorkeldink, Tootlesnoot, Malekith, and um, Ross, FNP, and Yadris, and Don. Thank you, Don. Uh, brand one? Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Uh, no, I haven't, The Slender. Sorry, I'm not familiar. Uh, let me just go with this one here. One second. Bit of a shorter album, this one. Yeah, this is a good one, though. Thank you, Half... Uh, sorry, Half-Blood Elf. Thank you, Half-Blood. Right, so... um. Kerbal, we're in a bit of a pickle, aren't we? Um, so if you are only just if you're only just joining us and uh, you haven't been watching the prior streams, I sent a couple of missions off to Duna. Duna being the in-game equivalent of Mars, and we've got a few problems. The first one is that the space plane we sent over there is not really very capable. At least, not very capable of going up and down reliably. It's got about 2,000 delta V. That's not enough. I think in order to comfortably move around Duna, we're going to need about 3,000 Delta V. So I need to design a new space plane. Adding better engines definitely failed. It turns out that they're just too big and heavy and it wouldn't work. Um, so I think we should design a much, much heavier... Sorry, it's a bit too loud. A much, much heavier plane that is going to be permanently stationed at Duna. While we're at it thinking about it, the position of the Duna base isn't great either. Um, I'm not so sure it was particularly wise to land in that crater. One second. Um, so I'll check that. Yeah, I'm sure. Surely we have a resource scanner on Duna. Let me just have a look. That that mountain that I spotted could be an excellent position for a base if there's ore in the regolith. Thank you, Sig Magor. Thank you very much, Sig. One second. Right, so here's Duna. So that's problem number one. Our space plane is not particularly capable, and we need it to be if we're to maneuver around the planet performing science, which is why I sent the science crew over there. The second problem is that the mining ship that I sent over to Ike, Jeff, has been badly damaged, much to my frustration. So uh, the grappler junior arm that's required to refuel uh, ships as they arrive is broken. So uh, it's not going to be refueling anything anytime soon. There is a... I mean, I could try to finesse it and land the plane on top of Jeff. Sorry, the other way around. Land Jeff on top of the plane. But laden down with all that fuel? I mean, it could take a few quick saves. We're probably just going to break it. Um, so yes, we definitely need a repair crew sent to Jeff and also a supporting vehicle to go up and down between Ike's orbit and Jeff so that Jeff can send fuel up, well, upstairs up into orbit of Ike or Duna without having to move. 
Right. Thank you, Dima and Morales Ariz. Thank you very much. Uh, the it's Solar Fields. Um, sorry, Stellar Drone. Uh, sorry, Lord of Ron. Uh, why don't we play CS:GO anymore? Um, well, we play lots of things, Falcon. But uh, mostly, the two people that really wanted to play CS:GO back a few years ago were Edberg and Sai, and they've very much gone off it. I think one of them, I can't remember which one, but one of them said they'll never play it again. So I was, oh, I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, I just kind of, you know, jump in w with whatever people are doing. Really, I'm always the third wheel. Thank you, LaserX. Thank you very much, LaserX. And we used to Union Bite, but we kind of got to the point where there's not really much VR stuff to do that we haven't done already. We played it so much, we exhausted much of what was there, which is a bit of a shame. Um, yeah. A Sai sold his inventory. Ah, okay. Maybe it was Sai then. Right. Okay, then. So, let's have a look then. Uh, so, what am I going to do first? Fix the plan. Tell you what, let's go to Ike and see if we can... Because I really want to go and investigate Ike a little bit. I mean, we sent the, the, you know, we got Kerbal Noughts on the surface. Let's go see Jeff. Okay. Hmm. Well, the team is still around, Vulcan. We bounce between different games. Yeah. I'm currently working on Team Fortress 2, which should be amusing, I hope. Okay, see, so note that Jeff is rather badly damaged here. So here's Jeff. Are his lights on? There we go. Do I ever think about the sausage roll girl? <laughs> no. No, that'd be weird. No, I hope she's well, wherever she is. It was just a particularly beautiful uh, employee of a bakery nearby. She's moved on, but yeah, I hope she's alright. I was just a random customer. She didn't know me. Right. Okay, so now here's the problem. This is the space plane that we sent down, and there's supposed to be a junior grabber arm like this one here. It's supposed to be mounted on the front for easy refueling, but it snapped off when I landed far too quickly and broke a couple of wheels at the same time. Whoops. So, the only equivalent is here. Now, we could move it if we had an engineer, but we don't. We've got Daflu, who's a scientist, and Jebediah, who's a pilot. Problematic. So... The only, and, and since the plane can't really move around much on its wheels, they're not particularly good. I was really counting on Jeff to do the, the manoeuvring, to steer to the plane to refuel it, so it could then subsequently take off. Hmm. Alright, so... Jeff is going to have to try to land awkwardly atop the plane over there, and hope that Jeff does not crush it. Right. Are some of the wheels gone? Yeah, like four of them, Slender, so we're going to have to send a repair crew. So what I'm going to have to awkwardly do now is just try and... Yeah, so re f uh, fill Jeff with as much fuel as possible. This is going to be stupid awkward for a few minutes. So start the surface driller. All the radiators aren't enabled. So it's going to have to... We're going to have to... Whoopsie. Speed up time. Let it drill. There we go. And enable. Is it working? Yeah, it's currently working. Okay. So we should be getting steadily. No? Uh, stop liquid fuel and oxidizer. It should be working. Is it working? 137. Uh, there we go. 138. Oh, God. It's going to take a while. Okay. Warp to next sunrise. Enable the drill. Ah, okay. So basically, we need to slowly and steadily. <laughs> Jesus. Get as much as we can. Wait, toggle time mode? Oh, I see. Cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the drill switches off due to low power, which is also very inconvenient. Got to keep starting and stopping. Hi there, Miss Jaina. Hi there, indeed. Good morning, and I hope you're very well. Yeah, I'm okay. A bit hungover. I opened up a bottle of whiskey um, last night, a newer one that I'd not tried before. And I had a little bit of that, and I had a beer beforehand while playing Holdfast. And now my head is like, ugh. Uh, yeah, my alcohol toler tolerance has dropped as I've, entered my as I've entered my 30s. That sucks. So, yeah. But it's like a, what is it? Hang on a minute. So I popped open a uh, blended scotch whiskey. Ugh. 
nice aftertaste, but one hell of a burn. As in when you first, you know, take the shot. Thank you, Maphne. Thank you very much, Maphne. There we go. Crap, this could... Oh, bloody hell. Damn it. Physics weirdness. Jeff overheated. Ah. Uh, Jeff overheated and exploded. Damn it. That shouldn't have happened. We had more than enough radiators to keep Jeff running. I suppose the problem is that the radiators stop when there's no power. Oh. Damn it. So maybe in addition to the repair crew, we need to send additional radiators or maybe even batteries. Yeah, maybe Jeff needs further augmentation. So more batteries and maybe a couple more radiators. Or at least radiators that don't require power. Crap. Okay. So, how long until the next transfer to Duna? Planetary transfer window from Kerbin to Duna is when? 300 days. That's not long, all things considered. That's really coming right up. Okay, what about other alarms? Planetary transfer to... We need to think about sending stuff to Drez soon. Same, 330. Okay. Uh... Planetary transfer window. Let's focus on the Duna operations for now. Radiators don't work without atmosphere. No, they do. They work fine. That's that's what they're for. They're to uh, radiate heat away from the nerve engines for interplanetary uh, trans uh, transfers. Mm -hmm. If they only worked in, in atmosphere, it would be weird. It means that nerve engines would never work. Okay. Right, so let's go back to the space center. Thank you, Nuts Art. Thank you very much, Nuts. Alright. Yeah, maybe an additional solar panel as well. So yeah, we definitely need to send a relief crew. Okay. So, let's go to the VAB. So I should send two missions. I, I should send the replacement space plane, which should just orbit in the... Uh, yeah, we'll send the, the space plane and have it just orbit the ISS until the crew can come and pick it up and drive it down to uh, to the surface. Oh, yeah, sorry, there was one more thing I wanted to do. So technically, I've, I've got three missions in mind. A new Duna base that's in a more convenient location. So that's the least important. A new space plane, second most important, uh, but the most important right now is repairs for Jeff. So we'll try and send all three missions. We'll see, we'll see. First, let me just have a look at Duna. So let me just go over here. So what I want to just do is go to the tracking station, select Duna. Now, we've learnt that on a, on a scan of the surface. So I'm pretty sure we have a resource scanner, correct? So resource is cut off. Oh, no, wait, we need to perform an orbital scan. I thought we had a resource scanner. Shit, I never actually, I didn't right click to perform the orbital scan. Rats. Does the ISS have a resource scanner? So we, we put our ore scanner over here, didn't we? We moved it. It probably doesn't have the Delta V to go back. Crap. Let me just check the ISS. One second. So if you're just joining the stream, you're looking at a, well, if you're not familiar with Kerbal, a space sim where you play as a more realistic uh, space uh, what's the word for it? Well, like, um, you know, like NASA, as opposed to, uh, you know, flying around in space as a backdrop. Here it's... Oh, why is that close? Good, the plane was landing. Uh, here it's not really a backdrop as much as uh, the main show. Realistic space travel. Realistic to a degree. Thank you, Sir Ridiculous. Thank you. All right. Three of those radioactive generators will power the drills throughout the night. Will they? How much power does it take for the drills to run? Because three of those radioactive generators is incredibly weak. They are extremely weak. Okay. Right, so I see no resource scanner here. One moment. If I just go to the curb net, do we have any, any sort of scanner on here? Crap. Stand by. Open up curb net. Presumably I can only do it from the drone, which is... Uh, drone controllers here. 
So this is Curbnet, so this is my ability to scan the surface. I don't know how long this has been in the game, but it's my first introduction to it really. So this is not really a look at the planet below, well it is, but pretend this is our direction of travel, so that's our progr prograde, that's our retrograde, and this is like looking through a periscope, so this is everything left, so up here, and this is everything to the right, so down there. So, I can sort by altitude or biome, but not by ore. Drat. Okay. So we don't have a necessary ore scanner aboard that would let me do that. Now the reason why I'm interested in this is because, if we switch that off for a second, note these ditches here. So that's incredibly low. There's some nice... Let me just refresh the, the scanner. Hang on. One moment. There we go. So there's some very nice high ground. Five kilometers high over there. Look. Come over here. Look at that. That's almost seven kilometers. It's just so to our right down there. So there's a seven kilometer there. Is that the one I want? That might be the one I want. So that is a tall ass mountain quite close to the equator. That wouldn't take much of an inclination change. If there's ore atop that mountain, that could be an excellent place for a base because you have a seven kilometer head start. The moment you launch off the surface, <laughs> Thank you, Braveheart. Thank you for saying so, and welcome indeed. Thank you, uh, Lap Open. Wait, sorry, Lap Open and Sir Ridiculous and Nuts and Raven Chef, Doctor Milf. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. And Maphne and Viceron. Also, sorry, off topic. For any Americans here, what the fuck is going on with your lighters? I swear, you've made the metal out of like crack. I've got a Zippo lighter in front of me, and I keep playing with it. It's like a fidget spinner. I've never, I've never even had a fidget spinner, but here I am, just spinning this Zippo lighter. Whenever I'm editing, I'm like, fuck, I picked it up again. Stop it. Fuck's sake. I picked one up for fishing because the uh, little plastic lighters that you need to, in order to get a small flame were rubbish. So I picked up, I'm, I'm going to buy a decent lighter. And now I can't stop fucking playing with it. Okay. Oh, really? You're playing with them up? You're playing with one in real life, Master. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. It's empty right now. I need to give it a refuel. Okay. Anyway, so, um, hmm. So, objective number three, figure out if there's ore at the mountain. Uh, I can't do yet because we don't have a capable ore scanner. Let's go back to the tracking station and see if the ore scanner at Ike... No, don't retask that. We need that one. Just in case we ever need to move Jeff. Piss. So maybe I should have a third component to the mission, which is put down an ore scanner satellite. Okay. Hmm. Right, so... Let's go over to... Let's go over to the VAB and see what we can build then. So, repairs for Jeff, that's priority number one. So we need to send an engineer, a capable engineer, and uh, repair kits for the wheels. At least, I presume, at least four repair kits. I don't know how many it takes to repair wheels. Um, and then... Is there, all, is there all on Kerbin? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't done a proper scan of Kerbin. I imagine surely. There must be. Um, eight pounds for Kerbal, good or bad? Oh, really? Is it only eight pounds right now? Uh, definitely pick up, folks. Uh, Kerbal Space Program is a very hard recommend from me, big time. It's a fine, fine game. Um, it's a bit tricky. It's got a bit of a, a, a slope, uh, to, as in a learning curve is quite well defined, don't worry. It'll, it will ease you into it. But it's, uh, it's definitely a sim. It's like one of these, ah, you know, you'll, you'll figure out orbital mechanics. It's pretty good. Regardless, I recommend it. Even, even if it looks like it's too, like, oh god, a bit too daunting, pick it up. It's very, uh, yeah, it's very good. Okay, so what am I doing? So my objectives are to send a repair crew over to Jeff and to send a replacement space plane. So, which parts should we... Let's focus on the repair mission to Jeff and we'll stick an ore satellite for Duna. We'll do them combined and then the space plane will come later. We'll send the space plane alone, because I anticipate that the space plane is going to be gigantic. Okay. So, let's start from the very top, then. Let's start with the satellite that's going to go to Duna. This will be the first stage as a sort of payload. 
So, give it a very, very small probe. What can we manage here? So we need an ore scanner. So here's a dinky winky uh, little probe unit. Probably doesn't even have a reaction wheel. Yeah, it's very small. Okay, and let's find it a... So we want the ore scanner, don't we? Utility? Where's the ore scanner? Cargo, science, communication, science. Here we go. So a survey scanner. Mount that thing there. So it's a rather large device here. We're going to have to put that under a fairing. But when unfurled, it will let us scan the planet's surface to detect ore all over the place, which is lovely. So let's give it an in a, a dinky winky little tank. Sort by mass. And give it a xenon? I mean, a xenon would work. Yeah, give it just a single Dawn engine and a Xenon. Or are we going overboard? We might be going overboard. Um, how much Delta V would that have? So change my calculations over to... So note the small number in the bottom right corner highlighted in orange. So this indicates how much I can change the velocity of this craft if it's around Duna in a vacuum. 5,400 Delta V. So I can speed it up or slow down by 5,400 meters per second, which is a shit ton, frankly. More than enough. So, we don't need that. Let's take off the Xenon engine and keep it simple. Let's go with a small Oscar B fuel tank and give it an, a dinky winky little ant engine. 1,642 delta V. What about its thrust to weight? 1.4. It can easily push itself around. That should be more than capable. In terms of solar power, we could give it a couple of these. How much power does this thing require? Let's have a look. So survey scanner, it requires, so scanning time, scanning for all resources, ah, part cannot be placed in a storage container, doesn't seem to mention power requirement, should be fine, we'll give it a couple of these regardless, stand by, oh and it'll probably need a reaction wheel, it'll definitely need a reaction wheel, it's got no way of steering itself, so, uh, what am I doing? Command, command and control. So this is a small wheel with a weighted set of, well, with a, with a weighted wheel in it. And it's going to spin when powered with electricity, generating torque, which you can use to turn a craft. Um, yeah, so this thing will spin uh, yeah, the craft for us as we turn. Although, is that gimbaled? No. So we're going to need it. So this engine cannot turn the nozzle. So yes, we need this, uh, we need that reaction wheel. Okay. Uh, this is a scanner, Philip, which is going to go to Duna, Mars. Uh, nope. Okay, there we go. So this this will be what it what it looks like when it's fully deployed. Should be capable. Indeed, purely a vacuum probe, really. Thinking about that, why am I not sending a true probe? We've got true probe bodies. We should just send one of those. Hang on. Detach that, remove that, remove that. Instead of this cent central section as our root piece, what about if we just send a MPO probe? It's a bit chonkier, but it has its own fuel tank and comma ray and reaction wheel. It's a bunch of things combined, you see. Okay, so take away the reaction wheel, take away the fuel tank, and just stick the engine on the bottom. Give the solar panels on the side, like so. Just uh, fill them up. There we go. Move it up just for the sake of convenient storage. Uh, go to the engines and then give it a uh, another little twitch engine. Probably give it a spark engine. 1,500 delta V, slightly less delta V. Okay, but we've got the communications array built in. Okay, it's a bit, it's a bit chunkier, but uh, yeah, I'll do fine. Batteries, it should have its own built-in battery. Yeah, built-in battery, big battery. It's got its own big fuel tank. Uh, not that big fuel tank, to be honest, looking at it. No, it should be fine. Okay, if I gave it a little twitch engine, could it push itself? 1,500 delta V. Thruster weight is, ooh, kind of pitiful, to be honest. Okay, so this thing I can't do any... Yeah, so don't let this probe... Okay, so I've got to release this probe when we are already in orbit around Duna. Okay? All right. So... That's the first section. So this is going to be Jeff Repair and uh, Resource Probe Build. 
There we go. Save. Okay, so there we go. Do I play with mods at all? No, no, this is all just vanilla. Okay. Uh, let me pop that there. So that's our decoupler. And we're going to have to put the whole thing in a payload shroud in order to protect it on the launch. There we go. So put it all in a shroud, like so. So this will be our nose cone, effectively. Right. So breaks off, breaks off. We'll put another one where it breaks off here. We'll put it all on its own stage, and then it can just detach and go do its own mission as we go off and continue. Okay. So all we have to do is drop that, drop that, that cone in orbit around Duna. Okay. Good morning, Digby. Uh, ZF Digby is in the chat, everyone. Hope you're very well. Um, thank you, the Sex Master. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also, one second. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Yeah, she's a happy girl. We went for a W word this morning in the P-A-R-K. And she uh, she trotted around. She got a bit damp. She didn't like it. She was like, look at me go home. Ah, oh, dear. Yeah, she's happy. She's a happy girl. Okay. Right. So. Yes, indeed. She knows the word, mister. If I say it, she'll get an alert like, ooh. Right, sorry, that's a bit loud. I'm just going to turn that down just a smidge. Right, there we go. So, that's the front nose cone. Have I forgotten anything? It's already got its comm unit. It's got its power, battery, reaction wheel. I think that's all, all okay. So just leave that alone. So initiate that engine. Initiate that decoupler. We'll, we'll drop the, the, uh, the uh, fairing long before then. Make sure it's a clamshell fairing because it just looks cool. Okay. Yeah, so put all that in stage zero. So that's for the final... I can always shimmy that stage down earlier if needs be. Probably will. Do we have snow outside? Uh, no, I think there's a little dusting coming tomorrow, though. Makes me nervous because I was going to go for a drive tomorrow. Hopefully it doesn't interrupt. Okay. Right, so now let's think about repair mission for Jeff. Hmm. How are we going to do this? So what does Jeff need? Jeff requires... Let me just uh, put it to one side. So Jeff is probably going to need... Another solar panel would be nice. Just one. Let's not go mad. Okay. An engineer to move all this. So, coupling. He's going to need an advanced grabbing unit junior. There we go. So solar panel, advanced grabbing unit junior. He's going to need a, a couple of other radiators and some repair kits, isn't he? So let's just get a payload, a cargo thing down. Yeah, just to remind me that we need to fill that full of repair kits and other bits. Okay. What about radiators? So thermal. So radiator panel. So if I unfurl that, like so, does this require power to run? Uh, requires electrical charge. Yes, they all do. It looks fairly cheap, though. Okay. Put a couple of these. How weighty are they? All right. So... If I send those to Jeff, also what? What? Well, sorry, let me also send one of these. While while I noticed that it's here, there was an anchor or something, wasn't there? I think it's relatively new. I think it's an an, an, an like an admittance of oh we fucked up the physics, because it's a let's clamp this object to the ground so it doesn't bounce around. Item, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, light strip, what's that? Um, <laughs> firework launcher. Yeah, why not? It's a bit of a toy. That can always go in cargo. Um, what's the plan with Jeff? Fix him, basically. So where's the um, payload? Ground. Thermal, electrical. Oh, was that it? No. Oh, yeah, he requires additional batteries, doesn't he? Okay, send him a whole bunch of additional batteries. Okay. Yeah. Ones that I know that I can move. Okay. Uh, so, all of that stuff needs to potentially go to Jeff. 
Why not send a grabber arm instead of a nose cone? A grabber arm? I could do... The nose cone should be fine. Jeff can just roll over and just, you know, grab. That's the idea, at least. Okay. Uh, sorry, that was a bit of a shorter music track. Let me just uh, find a different one. Let's go with this one. Cool. One second. I'm fine confused. I'm a little bit hungover. In fact, please forgive me. I'm just going to hydrate. I must remember to keep hydrating. Also, I need to be very careful because I've picked up another... I, I do this from time to time. So, I bite my nails really badly. I always have. I've bitten them for years and years. And um, I remember being quite self-conscious about it when I was younger. But now I'm like, fuck it, whatever, who gives a shit? Regardless, it would be nice to have fingernails, and occasionally from time to time, I uh, buy like these little bottles of really foul-tasting, it's like foul-tasting nail polish that's intentionally made so that you can, like, if you're trying, if you're absent-mindedly biting your nails, you go, Ugh, and sort of react negatively, like, oh, it tastes horrible, like this chemical taste. So I bought another bottle of it, but it also means you need to be very, very careful not to touch your food, because all of a sudden it's like, Ugh. You know, you mishandle your bagel and you get like a taste of this, like, uh, stop biting your nails, uh, you know, fucking, what's in it? I don't know, but it says extremely flammable. I best be careful with this lighter then. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, Nils. Thank you very much, Nils. Thank you. Sorry, I just need to hydrate. One second. Okay, so, so how are we going to get a craft down to Jeff? And just thinking about it, if I did send a craft down to Jeff, the engineer is going to be stuck there, surely, because the space plane is a two-seater. So, here's what we're going to do. We send an engineer in a probe that will land next to Jeff. The engineer's job is to fix Jeff, but we also make sure that the space plane has a seat that we can pick up and put on the space... As in, sorry, the probe has a space plane. Uh, oh, my God. The probe has a space seat, this thing here. So the engineer is quite... He's just going to hitch a ride on the plane as it goes back to the ISS. So he's going to stay at the ISS. Um, we don't really need him down on the Duna base. And, in fact, the engineer can go later on, can go and go to the new Mars base, couldn't he? So, uh... Yeah, and of course the new space plane will be a four-seater, so we just need a passenger. So let's start there. Let's go to the command seat. No, correction. Let's go with the probe core. So we're going all the way up to this big probe core, okay? So, there we go. There's our probe core. Right. Can I disable the crossfeed? Is that disabled or enabled? I'm not sure. Anyway, there's the probe core. I'll detach that later and make sure it'll still work. So... Control point here. Ah, this is going to be difficult to figure out delta V calculations, isn't it? Mm hmm. Tricky. Okay. So. Damn it, how am I going to do this? I guess drain. Okay. Drain all of this fuel for now. Remind me urgently that that's empty. Uh, yeah, before I launch this sucker. So the probe at the top has no fuel. Okay, so let's go to payload, maybe? No. So he can't sit on the on the side of the chair as it's going through the atmosphere. He'll die. At the uh, yeah, the atmospheric heating as we ascend. So he needs to sit in like a a passenger seat. Lander can maybe? The lander can will survive the ascent, right? What's its thermal resistance here? Tolerance fifty Gs. And 20 meters per second impact, max temperature on the skin, 1,200 to 2,000. Sort by mass again. What's the lightest thing that he could sit in? That, I suppose. No, no, we'll go with the lander can. Lander can's fine. Okay, so how many does it seat there? 
So the lander can is an incredibly thin skin. It seats two. Okay. So who's going to go then? I've got Bill. Ah, cool. Or Hartley. Hartley even. Ah, send Bill. Bill can go hang out with Jeb again. Be nice for them to, yeah, yeah, them to see each other. All right, so Bill, please get aboard the lander can. And your mission is to go to Ike. All right. Thank you, Silver. Thank you very much, Silver DK. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Thinking about this then, maybe I should... I've got a good idea. Save this. Right. Save that. Jeff Repair and Resource Probe, right? And then save this as number two. And what I'm going to do is later on, I'll merge the two. I'll, I'll try it later. Basically, I, I, it's Delta V calculations. I need to figure out exactly if I've got enough fuel. And it's going to be awkward if I've got two missions combined into one. So maybe, let me just test it. Save this. Saved, okay. And then new, right? Here we go. New. Okay. Land a can. Probe first, sorry. Land a can. And then we've got the stuff that works. So pretend I'm, I'm loading it properly. And then we go open, right? Yes, save. This is uh, Jeff Repair Mission Body. Save. Open. And then I want to go merge. Thank you, Rich Rage. Thank you very much, Rich Rage. So don't open, just merge. So what was it? Duna, Probe. Shit, what did I just call it? I, I quite... Was it Jeff Repair Mission first, did I type? Yeah. So, merge. Here we go. There we go. And then, okay, so when, when I need to, all I need to do is drop this on the top. Okay, so we know that this mission has everything it needs. Sweet. So let's focus on the middle part of the mission. Excellent. Here we go. So, with the Delta V calculations entirely for just the Ike part of the mission, let's give it a fuel tank. So we needed, what was it? It was about... 400, roughly 400, 500 Delta V to get safely down to the surface of Ike. So let's say... Yeah, they're still reminding me about the fuel. Cool, cool. Thank you, Rich Rage. Thank you. Uh, which, bit of it, which bit of editing takes the longest for you? Um, it's the keyframing, uh, Dwagonite. So the keyframe, so the, the middle stage where you're keyframing the text to make it follow things. Um, there are automated ways to get around to do some shortcuts, but it really depends on the nature of the footage. Sometimes those shortcuts will not work, and you've got to do everything manual. Again, the speech that I always do for this. If you've got a tracker point, if you've got a consistent color or contrast that stays there the whole time above a person's head, fantastic. You see those kerbals down there with yellow hats? Easy to track. Easy. It starts getting more complicated if that Kerbal starts turning around and the hat starts changing colour, or he runs into that shadow and suddenly the hat changes colour or contrast. It becomes even more complicated if my camera is moving and it becomes really complicated if this is happening. There's no piece of auto tracking, well, if this were he were moving around too, there's no piece of auto tracking software in the world that could successfully do something like this. Uh uh, ain't happening. The computer has no... Especially if there's then subsequently uh, artifacts through uh, compression. And there is compression. I can't save every live stream without compression. So, yeah. When it's that, and it has to be frame by frame. You couldn't do it... You could not do it anything other than frame by frame. Uh, not to make it look smooth. So that's when it said it's longest. Mercifully, those scenes are relatively few and far between. But they do happen. Okay. Uh, the easiest one to edit has been Counter-Strike Global Offensive, as I mentioned yesterday. Uh, I think it's the competitive nature of the game, but for some reason, someone made the decision to put little coloured arrows above the heads of all the terrorists and counter-terrorists. Oh, God, it makes it so piss-easy. The arrows never change colour. They never change... Well, they do change size a little bit. But it makes it so, so easy to track. Not really, old gravy. I'm um, sorry, I know I, I know it sounds like a blanket statement like that. Sounds easy to disagree with. Like, no, surely. No, really. Computers, algorithms are dumb. They're, they're, they're exceptionally good at doing very specific things, but the moment you throw a curveball, the moment something goes whoop and appears over the front of it, it immediately shits itself. There, it's, it, it just... 
algorithms just cannot compensate for small changes, even tiny changes in, in situation. Um, yeah, there's no auto-tracking software in the world that could track some really, you know, fucking this going on and they're moving, you're moving. There are flashbangs going off so that everything's changing colour. Anyway. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, so go to the fuel tank and then... What do I want? Sort by mass. Okay. <laughs> I'm after this. No, where is it? These are the space plane ones. Kerberdyne? No, we don't need to keep it small and simple. Just a lander can. Maybe we should just just do some radi radial ones. Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. What happens, what happens if we just do radials? Does it have a... Uh, okay, so it has no... Oh, no, it does have a reaction wheel. It's probably not going to be strong enough, though. Is it going to be strong enough? Uh, well, we'll have gimbaled engines. It'll be fine. Uh... Let's just try. Hang on a minute. So baguette, baguette tanks over here, right? Give me four of them. How much fuel would it take? Small reaction wheel. One minute. Wheel authority. How much wheel authority is, does this have? So, pitch talk, your talk. So, it's got 30. What about the lander can? One second. The lander can has... Fifteen. So, it's got half the reaction wheel strength. Should be good, though. Half's pretty good. And what about that? That has its own wheel. No, it should be fine. Yeah, sorry, this probe has its own reaction wheel spinning. There's a weighted wheel spinning inside it, generating torque. Okay, so how much how much talk? Fuck, stop. Stop it. Oh, pretty rubbish. 1.5. Really? Okay. So, engines. Let's do some radial mounted twitch liquid fuel engines, four of them, and then make sure the calculations aren't Duna, but Ike. Okay, there we go. So that's one th oh, that's shit ton. That's a shit ton. One thousand. So yeah, this should be plenty capable of landing down on Ike. All we have to do is get it in orbit around Duna. Although its cargo is not complete, let's let's get it loaded and then check, shall we? We could always add some more bag baguette tanks, couldn't we? Okay. Uh, what about the thruster weight? Yeah, shit ton. Seventeen point. Oh, holy shit. We might even be we might even be able to go smaller. Are there smaller engines that would be even better? Uh, spider ones? They're tiny. Yeah, maybe. One second. Put four spiders. Spider engines. 1,200, 2.3. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. So leave those to one side for a second. So let's focus on getting the cargo aboard, shall we? So, it has a little bit of inventory. It can carry a little bit of, the, yeah, some things. So, let's put the EVA repair kits in there, shall we? So these are the repair kits that we require for Jeff. Do we need four for all four wheels? Put that there as well. Put a whole bunch of repair kits. We'll see how many we actually need, eh? Okay. Indeed. Uh, d don't worry, Tobub. We've uh, we've we've done the um, yeah, we've done the the test with the probe. Hmm. Right. There's also these storage units that we can mount on the side if needs be to store more things, but... Okay, so put that there. Don't forget the external chair. So we're going to have to mount that anyway, just so that this can be lifted off the side. Stop it. Yeah, so strap that there, because the engineer is going to be on the back of the space plane as it lifts off from Ike. Okay. And then we need the radiators, the solar panels. So these are just deliveries for Jeff. What's going on there? Something weird. So there's a solar panel for Jeff. Get some big thermal panels for Jeff. Thermal, this one here. 
So get give them a couple of these, right? Are these the ones that extend? Yeah. External radiators for Jeff. Thank you, Neonix. Thank you very much. So what what else was there? Um, it's going to need a communication system. Battery is already aboard here. Yes, electrical charge. Yeah, it's got electrical charge. Uh, probably a good idea to have its own separate um, electric uh, solar stuff. Okay. Hmm, I'm just wondering about this. Maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. We do need to send a vehicle, right, that's going to go up and down from the surface, transferring Jez's, uh, Jez's, Jeff's f fuel, right? So why don't we just build that? Why don't we just build that and send Bill on it? Why not? Why can't that just be part of the repair mission? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's not a bad idea. So, save that anyway, just in case I want to come back to this. Okay. Let's switch over to the... Switch editor over to the, the vehicle planner, right? Get rid of that for now. Okay, so just make this a similar looking thing, right? Okay, but instead of having a little incy wincy lander can, right? We'll have a small passenger node on the front which will just drop off. Oh no, wait, we can't because it still needs to be aligned with the stack. Okay, yeah, still put the lander can in there. I got an idea. So yeah, we'll drop off the lander can when it's not needed, but when we when we arrive, so we'll just go bloop, drop it off, right? So lander can. Where is it, lander can? Land again. So this will just carry Bill, and that's its only purpose, right? And then it just drops off. Okay. Yeah, simple as that, right? And then we will put a fucking huge tank. Can we go bigger than that, really? I mean, this is a this is a tanker, isn't it? How much does that contain? Eight hundred. That contains. Yeah, that's bigger. Okay, so empty all that out, right? Well, why why empty it all out? This is going to go in for the landing. Just give it enough fuel necessary to bring it down to the surface, okay? And then we'll put wheels on it, big old wheels, so it can roll around doing exactly what Jeff is doing. Maybe even a, a robot arm to, to, you know, attach to Jeff and drain the fuel. You see, do you see my logic? Um, okay. So this thing goes up into... So detach that for a second. So pretend he's not there. This is what it'll look like when it's actually, you know, driving around doing the mission. Okay. So fuel tanks, fuel tanks. Drain all this and then give it some side-mounted tanks. And we'll make sure that those side-mounted tanks are always full. Yeah, like this, right? Okay, how much is how much are in there? So liquid fuel, one, 180, 220. And then give it an engine. Uh, bigger. We'll just give it radial mounted ones. Yeah, go with the radial mounts. Thuds? Thuds might be too big. 1,800. Ike vacuum. Uh, good. Yeah, sorry, what's the thrust to weight ratio on that? Uh, whoa, 24. Yeah, <laughs> dial that down. So we don't need thuds. Twitches? 2,300. Thrust to weight is 4. Okay, give it 4 twitch engines, right? Right, yeah. Give it four twitch engines. So this will be the vehicle that's coming up and down from Ike delivering fuel to craft above. And we'll give it a, a grabber junior arm. A couple of docking things as well and RCS. So 
2,000, that's too much. Dial down the number of tanks. So just some small tanks, their only purpose to move it up and down. Uh, smaller. <laughs> yeah, Disney's going to come for me in a minute. Um, so 14 thruster weight, 800 delta V, bit more. Give it, give it, give it like a thousand to do it reliably all the time. In, it's slightly more than a thousand actually, so we can go up and down, yeah, up and down, up and down, on the same tank. Remember, I've got an empty middle tank as a comparison. Indeed, the tank is being kept empty. So this is the fuel that we're going to be ferrying. Oh, we need to make sure that when it's full, it has enough to go up. Okay. Fill the tank. Whoop, whoop. Engines. Okay. Oh, rats. Fill the tank, but don't access it. Remove it from the Delta V calculations. Okay. Small. Give me three. Okay. So we've got 400 Delta V. Not enough. This thing will not be able to lift itself up reliably. Go bigger. Okay. So 700. So that can definitely do it. All right. So. Thank you, Felix Locklear. Thank you very much, Felix. Thank you. So here's what I'm thinking, 700 there. No, just 700 to go up, so that's plenty. Then it delivers the fuel. So I'm just trying to think how the what the best way to work this out would be. So if it takes 700 to go up, you drain all the tanks to there. So when it gets here, the tanks will be that, 248 remaining. Then it drops all the fuel, and that gives it 1,000 to come back down. So that should be more than capable. You know what? I'm going to give it one more tank just to make damn sure that it's capable. So instead of three, four. Four radio mounted. There we go. And then we absolutely know for certain that this thing will be capable of lifting this much fuel reliably up and down from Ike all the time. Thrust to weight ratio is good when the tank is empty. Thrust to weight ratio is still good when the tank is full. Awesome. There we go. Make sense? However, I shouldn't do... Yeah, I, we need to be able to drive around. So... Let's instead do four. And have them mounted up here, higher. Take the engines off, off again. Too small. Liquid fuel. Make sure it's got oxidizer. T400s. T400, T400, yep. Right. Uh, yes, indeed, we need RCS, so it's, it'll be capable of docking. Absolutely. You're 100% you're correct. Hold Alt to copy parts. Oh, good to know. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Uh, and then, in fact, shimmy it down that way bit more. Uh, move it down a little bit. Okay. Parachute just in case. No purpose. Uh, this thing will never go to Duna. And Ike has no atmosphere. Uh, but just for the initial ascent, we can always pull these off by the engineer to save the weight. Not that they're particularly weighty. Sorry, what, aerodynamic? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Nope, too big. Yeah, there we go. Uh, come on, there we go. Snap on, you bastards. Come on. It's <laughs> trying to snap them onto the... Uh, the main part of the fuselage. Come on, come on.
Ugh. <laughs> Place him from above. <laughs> Come on. Ah! Ah, there we go. Gotcha. Alright, and then turn that round. Yeah. Cool. There we go. Right. And then we'll sort out the, uh, sort out its ability to drive around, shall we? Structural. Modular girders. Do these, like so. Right. <laughs> okay. So yeah, anyway, sorry for the people just passing through the stream. Uh, please know that I'm working on Team Fortress 2 Bullshittery, Part 1. It's uh, the start of Day 5 of probably 35 of, of days of editing. Sorry for the, the highball estimate there. I'm hoping it will take less time, but we'll see. Okay, um, and then wheels, and just make sure they clear that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Landing rover. Rugged wheel. Okay, then make sure it's fully kitted out, and then we'll make sure, yeah, we need to do the delta V calculations again to make sure it's still capable. Uh, yeah, that should be good. And then I just lower it down on the suspension. Not even the suspension. Only 35? Well, I'm hoping. I mean, you know, I'm hope, hoping it doesn't balloon. There we go. And we'll just put the tool to lower that like so. Cool. There we go. They're in line. We'll test it before we launch, of course. Okay. Need bigger wheels? So I think we'll be all right. Would I consider doing an editing stream? It's been mentioned a few times, King, but I don't think it would be very interesting. If you'll forgive me, I have to concentrate, so I wouldn't be able to stop and talk like this. I've got to be editing. Um, and you'd, it would just spoil all the jokes, because no amount of text can make a joke funny again once you've seen it. Um, it would just spoil all the jokes and be rubbish, and I'll mostly just be sitting there listening to music and, you know. Hang on. Sorry, can I just pull my head? Mm. This headache is killing me. Some proper sugar, I think. Not that this is, it's just sweetener. Damn. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at the center of mass and the center of... Th well, the center of mass and the center of thrust, I hope, won't be too much of a difference on the ascent, because this will be a relatively small... Um, this will be empty, of course. Uh, but yeah, this will be a relatively... Actually, why have that empty? That could just be part of the burn phase, couldn't it? Might, might as well use it. If it's a free fuel tank. Yeah. One second. All right, so if this is going to be the lander, let's give it a communications thing. Pop that there. There we go. Cool. Then give it a... Okay. Communications thing, and then give it a... Uh, well, we're going to need RCS, definitely, so it can maneuver and go and dock with whatever it is it's refueling. So on the underside, we'll give it a uh, docking port of some description. Uh, so, robotic structural command, nope. Oh, isn't that reaction wheel kind of pathetic? I think it is, isn't it? RC-10, hang on a minute. RC-10, it's this one here. How much torque do you generate? 1.5. Bugger. Um, it's going to need its own reaction wheel. Give it its own proper reaction wheel. This thing's going to be, uh, yeah, rolling around. Okay. RCS on the top for when it flips upside down. Um, yeah. We should also put the solar panels on the sides for that same reason, so it can lift up. Does it need huge solar panels? Uh, not really, but do it just so we can flip. 
thank you, Vanilla Gorillas. Thank you very much, Vanillas. So, like that. Okay. No, don't, they don't need to be that extreme. Um, right. Dial down the reaction wheel authority. What about that instead? No, they can't re uh, refer. Yeah, we, we need we need to be able to retract them. Uh, One point six. Just do smaller ones. There we go. One to six, not one to fives. Yeah, there we go. Right. Uh, so mono propellant would be wise. So let's put some monopropellant tanks here. Okay. Just a couple of them. How much monopropellant? Uh, about 240. That should be more than enough. And then RCS. So when this is full and it's having to maneuver up into space, the center of mass will be here. So make sure the RCS thrusters are there. Okay. So RCS thruster block. Not that make sure it's in symmetry mode there we go so there should be one there and one there nope there we go fuck no it's fine cool there we go so that'll that'll turn it around and yeah we should give it a proper like a uh, hang on verners no don't use verners just use um linear monopropellant ones here and give it four. Like so. So push it off to where it's going. But is it docking from the front? I guess so. Hmm. Move that comm unit further down. Will it still operate? Yes. Okay. So it's got battery, solar, engines to go up and down, monopropellant, it needs a form of docking. So how am I going to do that? Let's put an underslung. Clampertron Junior. So not command and control, coupling. Okay. Clampertron docking port, doesn't need to be a huge one. Go with a Clamp Clampertron Junior, right, there. So it will come in and dock there as and when it needs to. Put another smaller one there on the surface. For I got some advice yesterday which I thought was quite clever. If I put it there and then select control from there and pretend I'm docking, when I'm driving around on the surface it will give me targets on the nav ball forward because that can't this uh, this probe cannot be switched to forward control, only default and reversed because it's a, it's a, it thinks it's a rocket, not a rover. But if I do control from here, I can trick it into thinking it's a rover. I mirrored the comm module below. Oops, no, no purpose. An error. Thank you very much. Good spot. Okay. So, now the last thing that I wanted to do is... What if we did, indeed, put a small... Don't go, don't go big here. Keep it small. What if we did a small hinge here, right? Flip it round, rotate it, right? And then on that hinge, we put a small hydraulic uh, cylinder, right? And that thing can extend like whoop, like so. And this hinge can go whoop, down, okay? And then on top of that, we put another hinge, right? Small, keep everything small, don't go crazy. Uh, extension limit, whoop. Come on. I'm trying to snap it on. There we go. Ooh, snapped. There we go. And then another small one. Come on. Whoop. And then at the very end, a Clampertron Jr. It might flail around a bit and look incredibly awkward initially. Hang on a minute. So target extension. Turn the hinge. Target angle. Whoop. Yeah, it might be a bit goofy initially, but what if, when we actually get there, I can go like that, for example. So if the target is in a weird place, I can effectively move the arm 
and dock onto something to refuel it. Indeed, I was holding Alt S slant, it's just kind of weird. Yeah. What about if we also just put a, a little hinge? And sideways? Well, I'll, I'll just turn the wheels. I'll turn the whole craft. In fact, remember that. Hang on. So steering enabled on this set. Steering disabled on this set. Okay, so. Robotics. Hinge. Incy wincy. Okay. Hmm. Put down a cal controller. Just one next to it. Okay, and then pop that there. The cal controller lets you record a bunch of actions, preset actions. So, if I just do that to start with, put the hinge over here. I uh, can't go all the way. Oh well. Um, put it in this target angle there. Hopefully it doesn't bounce around and cause problems. Um, on power loss it's locked. That probably It's probably going to rattle around initially as we launch. Hope not. Uh, so, on the Cal controller, open editor. This is kind of cool. I need to play with this more. It's, it lets you do a bunch of automation. Uh, so, how does one do it again? I select the... That, right? No. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, play, stop. Uh, need to add action groups? No. There was a way to do it. So that's play. That play and pauses the uh, the keyframes that you've got. You think I need to be in action groups? Oh yeah, uh, action groups. Editor. How does one switch to action groups again? Actions. There we go. Ah, there we go. Yes, I selected here. That was it. So the cow controller. Editor's already open. So I want to go here on the hinge. There we go. Select the hinge. Okay, and then I want to drop in target angle, I think it is. Is it target angle? Uh, there we go. So here. So this is the, uh, yeah, this is basically keyframing. This is pretty much what I do when I do the editing. So you can set a keyframe here. So if I click it, right? Cool. So the first keyframe is going to be in this starting position, and I want it to end its keyframe. So another keyframe. Uh, do I add a keyframe? Is that a keyframe? Add point. Yeah, there's a keyframe. So like that, see? And then you can basically tell it to initiate. There's some beveling going on there. I don't want that. So yeah, and then when you play the cal controller, like so, I can have it do that. See? And then you can queue up a whole bunch of parts down here. Uh, so how, how do I... Uh, uh, yeah, just give me sharp, no beveling. Um, okay, then do that. But I don't want it to go all the way. Let's uh, so stop there. Right, so I want it to go around about there, please. Put in a new point, right? Okay, that point there. Then go to this point and delete it. Remove. Okay, so that's as far as I want it to go. I just want it to go there for the whole thing. No, 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 stop that. Just do it sharp, please. So get it right here and then just stop sharp. There we go. So yeah, there we go. Stop and then hold. Nope. <laughs> I wanted you to go here, no further. Oh, I see. Okay, so delete that one. Get rid. No? There we go. That should work. And then sharp. Okay. It should just go boop and stop there. Sweet. That's exactly what I want. Okay. Uh, so, cool. That's that hinge, and then what's next? This hinge there. Alligator hinge. Target angle. Yep, there we go. Just go sharp. Go around about here, and I, would, I want it to go new point. Sharp. Here. Oh, it's the same item. What the fuck? Isn't it? No, it's definitely the hinge. Oh, no, no, there we go. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, so. There we go. Pop that there. Okay, now I should be able to play them together, right? Though the, Normally they appear in a, in a thing. Hang on. The cow controller, hinge. Have I accidentally overridden one? Hmm. 
<laughs> Where's it gone then? Alligator hinge. That's just a regular hinge. Alligator hinge. Okay. Alligator hinge. Actions. There we go. They're together. Okay, I must have overridden it somehow. There we go. Like so. So the two of them should now play together. Like so. The hinge and the alligator hinge are both moving. Hmm. I'll mess with that later. Um, yeah, let's just get this thing... Let's get this thing built. But yeah, eventually I'll be able to tweak that arm to dock on to whatever's in front of it. So, yeah. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, leave that there. So, Cal controller and some hinges to play with later. We've got the docking port. Junior docking port there. Okay. Right. Engines are good. So, this is going to be the vehicle... Se oh, sorry, one moment. I've got to take care of the ants. Hang on just a second. All good. Right. Sorry, I just heard the click to indicate that the heat mat has, has reached the required heat. Um, so I just uh, adjusted it slightly. I've got a small ant farm behind me. And Queen Millicent, the name of the queen with her seven workers, is just getting comfortable in one of the corners of the ant farm. And I'm just sort of gently placing a heat mat underneath it to make sure that her eggs are sufficiently warm, but not too warm. I'm just trying to keep keep it a few degrees above room temperature and a bit of a heat gradient uh, so she can move her eggs all over the, the ant farm uh, to where, wherever she feels comfortable. And she and her workers are just going around keeping them clean. They're rather cute. Um, they've got to keep all of those eggs super clean, otherwise they'll start getting fungus and, uh, and start decomposing. So, uh, yeah... Well, it's always a risk, Solo, but that's why, you know, uh, that's why you, there are, there are several methods you can use to keep them in the ant farm. In this case, it's sealed, as in, there's no way out. There are air holes, but it's, uh, you know, the lid's on. It's not like an open top one. You can get open top ones, and what you do is then you coat the top part of the glass with a sort of uh, a solution that makes um, their legs can't grip it. So it just becomes an extremely slippery surface for them. Yeah. But that's, that's way later on when you've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ants. Hell, if you want to go really extreme, you just put them put them in a, a shallow tray and just fill that tray full of water. They can't swim, so, you know, they have a moat. Thank you, Kem. Thank you very much, Kem. Thank you. Right, so, power, reaction wheel, check. Communications, check. Engines, check. Mono, check. Okay, so here is our lander that's going to go up and down now let's just make sure the delta v calculations actually yeah make sure they're good so with a full tank of fuel ferrying it to and from orbit it has 841 delta v with a thrust to weight ratio of 1.68 not amazing but it should do okay so it flies up into space at which point i anticipate they'll probably have Probably around this amount of fuel left, probably. Roughly. So by the time they get into orbit to intercept the thing they're refueling, they'll probably have 279 delta V remaining. At which point, the tanks get dumped, fuel is transferred to the target, giving it 813 delta V. That should be enough to get back. Should be. That's still quite tight, though. Should be. They'll have lots of monopropellant. Okay. Aren't the wheels too close? No, they look okay. The robot arm is in the way of the docking port. That's fine, we'll just move it out of the way, as and when we need it. Okay. Why does Jeff need to be repaired? I broke him. I broke Jeff. I landed way too hard. Okay, I think this will work. I think this is, I think this is a, a capable vehicle. For its purpose. For what it's doing. Okay. Hell, if, if things get particularly... I can just hang on to some fuel here if I, if I absolutely need to. Right, so... 
let's stick that on here. Okay, so leave that tank empty for now. I'll remember to refuel it. Okay, there we go. Give all that some fuel, but do not allow access to it because this is what we need to get down to Ike. So do not touch. No touchy. No touchy. No touchy. No touchy. Okay, so then stick the lander can on the front. This is Bill's ride. What's going on? Oh, sorry, I'm still in the... Uh, group action group okay so bill you just get in there and get get a lift basically and then we give the bits that jeff needs okay so just what do we need we need repair kits specifically so eva repair kits to fix jeff's damaged wheels i don't know exactly how many we need so just get quite a few okay and in addition to that we know that jeff requires at least one additional solar panel so let's give him one here And we also know that Jeff requires... Wait, make sure I don't block the entrance. And also make sure that Jeff has... Uh, da, 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 da. One additional solar panel. He needs some additional radiators, doesn't he? There we go. Two of them. Okay. Uh, what was the other thing he needed? The chair to get the engineer back up on the space plane as it leaves. Okay. Thank you, Unique Namosaurus. Thank you very much, Unique. Oh, yes, the batteries, too. Good shout. Jeff needs batteries. So, we might struggle to stick them all on there, effectively. Uh, how much how much battery power does this thing have? Uh, limited, to be honest. Maybe we should stick a couple of batteries on this as well. Just there. There. Okay. Right, so give Jeff... Wait, does that open? Open shroud? Open doors? Oh, it does. Cool. Yeah, storage. That's why we struggled to st uh, stick them on effectively. Okay, stick some batteries in there. Okay. Same with the other side. So this will be for Jeff. Yes, Jeff needs wheels. That's why we've got the repair kits to fix the wheels. Right, additional batteries for Jeff... Whoops, that battery's on the door. Stop it. There we go. Closed door. Right, so I'm hoping that'll be enough. How are the ants, Lord Knight? They're doing well. Queen Millicent seems to be okay. I'm trying to leave her the fuck alone. Uh, she's undercover right now. She's, she's under a... Um, a piece of cardboard that I've got over the top of the ant farm. I just want them to be in the dark and feel safe. I need to later on lift them up and place them on a cupboard with some foam. So I just want to make sure that they're there for a while and they feel a bit safe. And then I'm going to intentionally wait until the room temp... So I'm going to wait and do it early in the morning when the heating has been off in the flat and the room temperature is down to about 15, 16 degrees where I'm hoping they'll be a little bit more lethargic and they won't be awake and they won't notice. So I need to very carefully lift up the uh, the ant farm and place it on its proper proper cupboard. Possibly silver. Once it's on top of that cupboard, it's next to the it's next to my desk over there. So uh, it's always possible to get a small camera over the top of it. Hmm. How do you put stuff into the storage? For no matter how you try, you always put stuff on the outside of the compartment. I think it depends on whether or not there are doors like that. This certain module has doors, you see. Okay, so let's just take it for a spin outside. Uh, so what are we calling this? This is, um, so what should we give the name to the vehicle that's going to go meet Jeff and go up and down delivering fuel? Jezzy? Derek? People are saying Jezzy. What does that mean? Is that a reference to something? Mini Jeff. Jezza, Kevin, Jeff, Dick, Goomba, Georgia, Clyde, Rose, Mummy, Jeffrey, Gary, George, Joff, Jeff, Ree, Barbara, Jeff's social worker, Reginald, Pip, Bezos, Daddy, Amazon employee, Tanky, Jeff Jr., The Flying Vibrator, Clive, Rupert, Dave, Sausage, Fred, Ocean's Eleven, uh, Brum, <laughs> 
Hectic Donkey Bob, Jeff's mum, the parole officer, Grep Jacob Thing, Archibald Egg Bart, Steve Knob, Jeff, 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 Chad, Alan Evergreen, <laughs> Jebediah Mule, Ubisoft. Oh dear. Never changed chat. Fucking battery. Uh. Hmm. Okay, think more specifically. Joink is here. Joink says joink, of course. Um, I'm thinking like, like, it's delivering fuel, right? Like a milkman. Is there like a milkman, like, n meme type name? I'd say like Postman Pat, but it's not really delivering post. Milk Cow. Nigel the Milkman. Milkman Jeff. Uh, Bessie. Bessie's not bad. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. It's a milk cow, isn't it? Daisy. Daisy's quite nice. Should we do Daisy? Daisy the milk cow. Yeah. Daisy. The milk cow of Ike. Yeah, it's Daisy. That's quite good. Okay. So, this is Daisy. Of course, the front bit is going to fall off once uh, that part of the passenger mission is complete. Okay. Right. So, Daisy the milk cow. Let's now take Daisy outside. Daisy MK1. Right, make sure that Daisy can indeed roam around. Uh, it's probably going to be a bit, be a bit front heavy there. Yeah, yeah. I just absent-mindedly chewed a nail. Yeah. Uh, I've covered my fingernails in that don't bite your fingernails stuff. I do it occasionally. Like I, I get like, hey, I'm going to grow my fingernails just to remember what it's like to have them. And then after a while, it's like, this is boring. I want to bite my fingernails. Consistently, all the time. Here we go. Right. Cool. Daisy's good. So remember, this front bit won't be here, so we won't be as front heavy. All right, let's just take it off-road to make sure it does indeed operate. How old am I, Lord Knight? 18. <clears throat> still young. Still young. <laughs> I don't want to be 40. My 40s are rapidly approaching. They're not here yet, but they're up the road waving at me. I'm like, piss off! Fuck off! <laughs> I don't want to be in my 40s. I'm halfway through my 30s. Fuck it. I'm 35. I'm like, god damn. Don't age, folks. It sucks. Never age. I know that Mag is sitting there rolling his eyes. The fossil that he is. Hi there, Mag. Mag's there. Join my club, he says in caps. It's glorious. We can reminisce about the olden days and yell at the kids next door. <sighs> I'd rather be able to stand up without going... Oof. Oop. Digby's mentally about 80. Dude, you're mentally stuck in the 1930s. Yeah. <laughs> the administration building's like, yep. Yeah. The, the guys are testing their rover in the car park again. Okay. So, radiators, power, uh, the repair kits, and the chair. I think we're good, aren't we? So let's uh, let's get this thing on the launch pad. Let's uh, yeah revert back yeah revert flight back to the space plane hangar, and then we'll switch over to the other VAB, and then get it as the middle section of the thing we're launching to Duna. So. This is what we're sending. Okay. Now then, let's think about this. So even though... Yeah, so... Am I missing something? I feel I'm missing something. Could get a few lights, just for when it's dark. Yeah, get a couple of illuminators on the front of Daisy. 
Will they fit underneath the fairing? Uh, well, it's not really a fairing. No, they're, they're just going to break if I put them there. I'll put them on the side. Uh, the engineer, Bill, can always move them later. Okay. Yeah, put some lights. There we go. All right. Give it a save, Daisy MK1, and then switch over to the VAB. Shift click. There we go. And now Daisy is the middle section of the rocket. All right. So place that there, and then we go open, uh, save. Yes, save and continue. And then we go to. Uh, we want to select the repair. So Jeff repair. So the first part, so the resource probe, and then merge. Here we go. And then this is the nose cone, the other part of the mission, that will just sit... Whoopsie doodle. Stop it. No, bugger. There we go. Shift click. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. There we go. Ah, is it not going to work? No. What have I done wrong? Oh, there's a lander can there. We don't need that. But I, yeah, I can remove it once I attach it. It doesn't seem to have an attachment point. Reroute the invisible one. How, do, how does one do that? I can't seem to attach it. Alt? Yeah, pressing Alt. No snapping point at all. You think I need to re-anchor the repair probe to the lowest part? Do you reckon? Will it do? It doesn't seem to want to snap on anything. Huh. Any ideas? Any Kerbal experts who might see the pickle? Use the root tool. Root tool. Icon next to the rotate tool. Ah, I've not used this before. Select uh, two. Sorry, select a set of two or more parts to reroute. Ha! Huh, what does this do then? Oh! Ah! Ah! Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. I've not seen that before. Okay. So uh, this is the probe. So forget this bit. We don't need this. Get rid of this and get rid of this. Uh, yeah. And then this is what we're launching up here. Yes. There's already a. There we go. All right. There is Daisy with her nose cone. She looks proper, proper fancy, doesn't she? So this nose cone is just a probe that we're just going to dump in uh, Duna's orbit. Remember to fill. Hey, yeah, remember to fill it. And the only purpose is to, uh, yeah, is to um, blah, 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 words. It's to uh, scan Duna for resources at a later point. We did have a, a probe doing that, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I moved it over to Ike, and now it's in a position that's kind of useless, so this is to uh, fix my fuck up. Okay. So, there we go. Can I just uh, edit the fairing fairing extension? Oh, cool. <laughs> Ooh, shiny. Okay. So, let's now think about getting this assembly up to Duna. Hmm? Uh, let's make sure that Bill is in, in is in the seat there. Uh, so Markin is, wants to fly. Don't worry, we'll we'll fly it from uh, mission control. Uh, so have Bill in the engineer seat there. Okay. So go there. Oh, sorry, pardon me. Also, I've lost the music. I'll just get that back get that back for you. I'm just going to run for a quick wee wee if that's all right. Hang on. Let's go with this one. What's this? Uh. Okay. One second. What's the time? Uh, about 20 minutes, and then I need to bog off and get on with work today. So we'll try and do this quick and get it in, get it at least launched. Right, one second, please.
Okay, so... So for those people just joining the stream, you're looking at a craft that's going to be going to Duna, which is Mars in the game, or the equivalent of Mars. It's a two-part mission, one to uh, send a repair crew and equipment over to technically a three-part mission. Repairs for Jeff, which is the mining uh, ship that we've got broken on Ike, which is the moon of Mars, Duna. Uh, the second part of the mission is to deliver Daisy, who's going to be a milk cow lifter. Her purpose is to bring fuel into orbit around Ike, so ships can, uh, well, refuel themselves. Also, one minute. And the final part of the mission is to deliver a small probe into orbit around Duna, which should be fairly simple. It's the nose cone section. One minute, where's OBS? There we go. So now, I need to build an assembly that's capable of providing enough Delta V to get up to up to Duna without inconvenience. So we're talking probably around 5,000 Delta V. Uh, just to make sure that I know I can do it safely. We can dip into the spare fuel if necessary, but I'd rather not do that. So, let's go down here. Structural coupling. So, actually, now think of the engine first. Uh, should I? No, 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 don't. Yeah, think of the decoupler first. One second. Piss. So place that there. And go fuel tank. <laughs> She's being cute, isn't she? And not very ladylike right about now. <laughs> I'm looking for... So that fuel tank there, if I were to give that an engine, right? There's a method to my madness. Bear with me. Right. So I want a vacuum engine. Where's that calculator? Here it is. So... I need... So probably so about 600 Delta V for the Duna arrival. About 1,000 Delta V for the transfer. Okay. So let's make sure we've got 2,000 Delta V of in vacuum transit for this amount of weight then that should do it safely and then 3500 delta v for the ascent okay so get some fairing over the rover uh i think we'll be okay we should be okay i hope we'll be okay we'll see stand by get an engine uh, engine, 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 size, sort by size. So that's a poodle, what's that? Yeah, that's a cheetah, sorry. Skipper, wolfhound. The wolfhound is the pretty good vacuum one, isn't it? So let's have a look. So what is this vacuum efficiency right about now? Uh, so 380, yeah, that's really, really good. So go with the wolfhound. All right. Now that has 300 delta V for this amount, uh, sorry, 582 delta V. Okay, so do not allow access to these. No touchy. This is to get down to Ike. Okay, so what if I fill this full of fuel and let you go for it? So use Daisy's supply. Okay, so it's not it's not considering it because it's uh, it thinks it's going to break off in this stage. So what if I say we're not doing that? One second. Make a fake stage here and then move this up there. One second. Let's move that up there. So what do you think you have? That's fine. So that... 2,000? Aha! Is that 2,000? What is it looking at here? I've got to try and make sense of the stage. Don't consider these engines. If I switch them off, I can't do that. Put, their, put these engines in their own separate stage for a minute, over here, just out of the way. Okay, and it's still going 2,000. So that's full of fuel. That's full of fuel. Uh, what fuel are they taking there? So this launches, right? 
it uses this fuel, then this stage triggers jettisoning that. Okay, so ignore all that. I see. So then it thinks the stage is there. What if I moved up there? En enable cross section. Do you mean cross feed? Two thousand. Oh, wait a second. Could these do it on their own? No, they wouldn't be able to des to descend safely on their own, would they? Their thrust to weight is too piss poor. And they might be able to. Daisy might just be able to do it on her own without this. Hmm. So let's just plan for that. For, yeah, sorry, uh, take that into account. So hold on. So this engine launches, right? This engine initializes. And then, right, we switch over to the these twitch engines for Daisy, right? And then she dips into her own supply, okay? Yeah, she's got 1,690 Delta V. So she could conceivably just take over the rest of the mission on her own. Yeah. What's these? Sorry, what are those? Is that for Bill? What's this? That's for the probe at the end. Yeah, just ignore that entirely. Okay. Yeah, just let just let Daisy do it. Uh, get her a make sure. Yeah, just get her a little bit little bit of help. Make that tank a little bit bigger. There we go. Cool. Then yeah, Daisy can, Daisy's got the rest. Six hundred and seven. Uh, Six hundred and seventy-seven. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. So this is the interplanetary. So yeah, this this will slow us down and maneuver us all the way to Ike. So Daisy will take care of that. This 677 will be the uh, part of the transfer over to Mars. Okay, so now we just get 3,500. So 3,500 Delta V to get up from the surface, the sea level curb in, and then up and off. Okay. So, let's go big then. Here we go. Place that there. And then we go up. So we upscale. Go bigger. Stand by. No. There we go. Kerberdyne. Go up to a bigger Kerberdyne. Not, not a Rockamax. Where's the big Kerberdyne? There we go. There we go. Big Kerberdyne. So this will be for the orbital burn and a good part of the ascent. Okay, so get a nice big meaty engine on that. Mastodon maybe? Probably go bigger. Mammoth? Stand by. Put it on its own initial stage. 2,000. Make sure that the... Uh... Okay, hang on. Kerbin altitude. Around about 50,000. Now go from sea level. Okay, 2,000 delta V from sea level. Then it breaks off and that takes over. So 2,243 from sea level is pretty damn good. Okay. So, let's have a whole bunch of boosters handle the initial the initial climb, eh? Big, big, heavy set boosters. Thank you, Captain Carnage. Thank you very much, Captain Carnage. Okay, one second. There we go. We got the money now. Thoroughbreds. Four big thoroughbreds, eh? Put them all the way down here. Cool. Uh, thank you, uh, Bal Balbereth the Penguin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And then, uh, something bigger than that. Bigger than that. Sort by size, please. Smaller. There we go. Right. Thank you, Shui90. Thank you very much, Shui. So it's sea level curb in 1,500. Uh, okay. Where's the thing? Sorry. 1573 plus 2243. 3816 from sea level. So it'll be even more favorable as we climb. This should be capable. This should be capable of performing the mission. All right, here's our rocket, everyone. Let's get some separatrons because I'm not so confident uh, at our ability to properly maneuver uh, this thing. 
One second, let's get some canards here that I can steer just in case they try to take care of the show. Uh, what's my thruster weight on just those boosters? 1.4. Okay, don't drop them too much then. 1.4. Then just separate. Make sure the mammoth is part of that stage. 2.0. Alright. There we go. Right, so. Uh, that should be fine, I think. Canards, uh, yeah, thrust to weight is good. Let's get some Separatrons, as I said. So for those watching with no idea what's going on, um, we've got to punch our way through this thick uh, atmosphere all the way down here at sea level, hence the big boosters. Solid fuel. You light them and run like hell. They're like a, they're like a big firework, basically. They'll just keep burning. You can modify the internal geometry of the booster uh, in order to slow down the burn rate, but effectively, you better make sure that you're ready to go when you launch them, because holy shit. Get some struts as well. Okay. The boosters, the boosters themselves are actually very, very thin. You could pierce one with a pencil. Don't do that, by the way. They're, they're built to be... Uh, sorry, is it to resist shearing action, but not piercing? So, you know, they're, they're, they're made of like a, like a honeycomb... Uh, hexagon type material, but uh, yeah, you could walk up to one and quite easily break it They're quite fragile, but uh, at the same time Very very powerful when fully filled one second uh, So that's not correct the separatrons are gonna go early don't do that Yeah, separatrons get in there with this stage Okay. Uh, only one attachment point onto the main rockets. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Actually, thinking about that, if the if the struts reach, try to stop the wiggle. Right. Sweet. Yeah, I think we're good. Save Daisy. Okay. Hmm. I don't know, actually, Micro. I, I know I've got the Breaking Ground DLC, but I don't know about the other one. And also, I have no memory of purchasing it. Must have been on a Steam deal a long time ago. Okay. So. And again, speaking to those who are completely not sure how space... You know, if, if all of this is completely new, the whole point of this is to make sure that as we climb out of this gravity well, this pit that we're in, uh, we're dropping our empty fuel tanks behind us. A process known as staging. So as we go, the boosters fall away. They're empty. They're just dead, dead weight. Then this tank falls away. The Kerberdyne is a dead weight. So each time it, a piece of the rocket breaks off, we've got less mass to push. And as a result, the uh, well, uh, uh, and also as a happy, happy be bonus, the atmosphere gets thinner the higher we get. So we need less oomph to go higher, less drag slowing us down. Very good. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Let's take it out to the launch pan. Can it stand on on the boosters alone, or is it going to wobble? Uh, g give it some. Give it some what's it? There we go. Don't put them in the way of the fins. There we go. Extra reaction wheel. Mm, do you think we need it? Maybe actually. Now that you mention it, we probably need a little bit here. I reckon. Uh, where's the engine fairing? Yeah, yeah. Good shout. We'll put a heavy-duty torque wheel right there, eh? Spinning. There we go. Save. Batteries for Jeff. Already up there, so we're all good. Right, make sure that Bill is aboard. Hi there, Bill. And I think we're good to go. So, check that. Yeah. Da, 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 da. All right. So, give it a save. And take her outside for a launch, shall we? Here we go. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Wefco. Sorry for missing your sub there, Wefco. Thank you sincerely, sir. And thank you, Shuey90 and Balbareth and Captain Carnage, Rum Privateer, Andrew the Giant, NW Carbide, and Unique Namosaurus. Thank you, all of you. Sorry if I missed anybody. Did I p put the fuel back in the thingy? I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. Oh, we got some wobble there. Do you see that wobble? Oh, dear. Is that going to be okay? Ooh. Okay. Stabilizer enabled. I think we're ready. Checking fuel count. 
Thank you, Radar. Thank you very much, Radar. Uh, okay. I think we're good. Up power on the engine. Let's see how we do on the launch, eh? So it needs to be a relatively slow, steady ascent. I've got to maintain control over the boosters. Otherwise, we're going to spin off and go crazy. Here we go. So initiating launch now. Oh, no, no audio. Hmm. Uh, what the fuck? Hang on. Did it bug out? It's quiet for me. It didn't make a so it didn't make a sound. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Uh, no pilots? Uh, no, no, it's being controlled by the probe. Uh, Bill is just along for the ride. He's just an engineer. Okay. Let's try that again. Initiating now. Weird. Okay, I don't know why it's not making any sound. Uh, did I did I mute Kerb? What the fuck? Did I mute Kerbal accidentally? One second. Uh, guess who's muted Kerbal this entire time? Right. How long has this stream been going? For like two hours? Alright, here we go. <laughs> of course, Zipsaf, of course. Also, good morning or good afternoon by now. Zam, I hope you're very well. Okay, stand by. Maneuvering node, check, check, check. And Godspeed. How fast is Godspeed? This fast. Initiating launch. Slow and steady. Let the boosters handle the initial punch. Just keep the engine throttled up just enough so that the liquid fuel gives us power, uh, gives us control over the boosters. Here we go, slow and steady. Okay. So we're climbing straight up. The apoapsis, our highest point of our orbit, is about five kilometers. Once it hits ten, we'll start a gravity turn. Stand by. Start gravity turn. Start turning the vessel. 90 degrees, carefully. Let's go, let's go. I've still got control. Still got control, we're good. Keep pulling this vessel over. Dial down the engines, just let the boosters handle it. They've got it. We're picking up quite a bit of speed, though. 26 kilometers, keep coming over. 32 kilometers. The target is 70, by the way. Note the blue dial at the top of your screen. Atmospheric pressure is steadily dropping. Switch over to orbital. There we go. We're okay. Continue. Still got control. Keep going. 54 kilometers. Keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning. 64 kilometers. Keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning. Some atmospheric heating. We're going a bit too fast. Could have toned down the boosters, to be honest. There we go. 77 kilometers. There we go. Right. Now, separating. Thank you. There go the boosters. Keep the gimbal up. Keep the gimbal up. Right. Cut. Let's make sure we're going in roughly the right direction. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Could uh, So I could have toned down those boosters a little bit, to be honest. Put some of that uh, speed... Uh, higher up in the atmosphere. Okay, so we're 1 minute and 33 seconds away from the apoapsis, the highest point of orbit. We're now 54 kilometers the atmosphere above the surface, so the atmosphere is very thin, but it's still not thin enough to be ignored. Once we reach 70 in Kerbal Space Program, there is a hard switch off, at least for Kerbin, of the atmosphere. There is no drag. That is not necessarily true in real life. There is no edge of the atmosphere, it just gets thinner and thinner and thinner. There is still the odd particle floating around up there, even in high orbit. 
Thank you, Cert Worthless. Thank you very much, Cert. Okay, stand by. So, how much have we got left in the mammoth? A shit ton. So we can burn relatively close to the apoapsis. Stand by. 33 seconds. Might as well initiate the burn now, slow. So, in order to achieve... So we're just falling straight back down, as you can see with the blue line there, where we'll crash and explode on top of the, on top of the heads of some fish. Um, so, instead of doing that, we need to pick up enough speed... Here we go, let's start burning. Pick up, pick up enough speed to dodge the curvature of the planet. That's roughly 2,200 meters per second. So we just need to increase our speed by 1,000 meters per second. And we do that by pointing the rocket eastbound and switching it on. 14 seconds until we hit the highest point of orbit, the apoapsis. Note the blue line in front of me, gradually being pushed further past the fish, onto some guy's house, onto some more fish gradually moving further and further away until eventually it will be further than the curvature of the planet. Orbit. Good afternoon, social. ZF social systems in the chat, everyone. Hope you're very well, sir. 1,800 meters per second. The target is 2,200. Blue line is moving all the way around the horizon. Tone it down just a bit. And there we go. Orbit achieved. So, the periapsis, the lowest point, is at 73 kilometers. The apoapsis is at 81. That means we are completely out of the atmosphere and will no longer be subject subjected to any form of drag, which means we could choose to jettison this if we chose to, if we wish. But I think it's quite cool. I think we should leave it there for a minute. Okay, so... Now, at this point, the, net, the next stage of the mission would be to take this craft and pick up its speed enough to fling ourselves free of Kerbin's gravity well and go and orbit the solar... well, uh, Kerbol, the star, so the solar system as a whole. We could do that. However, we need to wait until Duna is in the right position for a transfer. It's about 300 days away. So this craft is going to orbit for 300 days. Uh, truth be told, looking at the time, it's probably a good time to wrap up the stream because I think the next prudent action... Uh, hang on, sorry, let me just unfurl the solar panel, or a solar panel, one second. I think the next prudent action would be to design another Duna mission, send two at the same time with the transfer. So next stream, I think we should build... Uh, what should we build? So we've got Daisy the Milk Cow, we've got the Repair Mission, we've got the Probe. Uh, potentially a base? Potentially a new place to build a base on the surface of Duna. If we want to build one on that mountain. Hmm. Question is, I won't know if I want to do that until this mission arrives. So maybe that's a wash. Maybe that's a total waste of time. Okay. Hmm. Not sure, to be honest. It's a, it's a risk. If I could spend all that money sending the Duna mission, I suppose I could always land somewhere else, couldn't I? Okay. Socials in Scotland looking for drinking buddies. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're well, man. Right. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, so thank you for watching, folks. So it's already seven minutes past one in the afternoon. I need to go and get some lunch and then go get on with, uh, yeah, get on with this bullshittery. I've got quite a lot to do today, so I've got to stay focused, really. So I'm working on Team Fortress 2 bullshittery. It's editing day five of probably 35. So I need to keep cutting and tightening up the, uh, the clips, and then I need to start moving them into Adobe After Effects to do the keyframing to get all the text on there. Um, yeah, lots to do. I also need to do some cleaning in here because, uh, yeah, someone's going to be popping around tomorrow uh, to pick up Lulu, so I just need to make sure it's not a shit show in here. Um, yeah. But thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subbing if you did. Thank you very much, Kev, and Retikik, and Flecker, and Not Anonymous, and Cert Worthless. If you don't have Kerbal Space Program, I very, very strongly recommend it. It's a, it's a fine, fine game uh, that teaches you of the, uh, yeah, some of the basics of rocketry. Uh, yeah, it's very good. Right, one moment, please.
<laughs> sleepy dog is sleepy. Let me have a look and see who's doing what. One second, please. Right. So, uh, so Joink, Sheep, Quebec, and Edberg appear to be on. Anyone else on? Hang on a minute. What are they doing then? So, Quebec is currently doing some XCOM Enemy Unknown. Edberg is doing some Battlefield 2042. Sheep is doing Farming Simulator 22. Joink is doing Halo Infinite. And Swat Knight is doing more Pokemon. Um, who should I host up? I probably... Uh, wait, is he stopping? Fucking really awesome intro. Shops. Crazy. Sheep stopping? Um, Noodle, I will have to help you later when I'm not, uh, when I'm not streaming because it's going to be... I'm not sure. I'll hand you over to Sheep then. He's on the main menu. I don't know if that, if that means he's leaving. Cool. I'll leave you in Sheep's company and, uh, yeah, you can watch him farm some crops and, uh, yeah, drive his tractor around and all that jazz. But, um, yeah, this is ZF Sheep playing a bit of Farming Simulator 22. I beg your pardon. Do we really need 22? Okay, well, apparently it's Farming Simulator 22. Fuck a duck. Right. Anyway, so this is a uh, sheep playing Farming Simulator 22.